Hey guys, thanks for joining the CISSP session today. Uh, this is a mentoring session wherein we will talk about hacking your way to CISSP in 2021, right? What is CISSP, what the hack it is and what it means when it comes to your career and those kind of things. We are going to explore that completely today and why CISSP is having such a big name, why people are going after CISSP. Uh, people used to call it as the gold standard in cybersecurity, right? So why is it so and what kind of thing it is, why people say it's one of the uh, difficult uh, exam to take and how do we can make it very simple? How can we break it up and make it much more simple that is what we are going to talk about. So let's get started. This is the agenda for the entire session, right? We are going to talk about who is, who is the right audience for this particular session. What is CISSP and why should you go for CISSP? There are some myths also around CISSP. Many people have a very different perception around CISSP. We are going to talk about that as well. And then I will make you aware of the actual reality, uh, the actual thing, what is the ask from uh, CISSP to you guys? What is the ask from the industry to you guys? We are going to talk about those things in a mixed manner. And then I will give you an overview through CISSP, what is this? Uh, what it means, how the certification goes, how the exam goes, those kind of things we are going to talk about. And then we will go through just one or two questions there. And I will tell you how to tackle some of those difficult questions in a very, very easy way. All right. So everything has a process. So for that also, uh, for answering those difficult questions also, if you follow the recommendations which I provide, it's going to be super easy for you, all right? And why should be, uh, you should be part of my mission CISSP. Um, uh, who I am and what I am doing, I am going to talk about that as well, right? So this is the overall agenda for this session today. Uh, guys, let me know if you have something else also to discuss. We have a Q&A session which is there, which is scheduled at the end of the uh, presentation. That is where feel free to ask me any questions you may have. Uh, let it be your career related, let it be a CISSP related or whatever, okay? Now, who should attend this session? Uh, for whom it is making the most value, right? Uh, anyways, CISSP is such a thing, it makes value for everyone, but uh, it makes more value for people uh, for professionals who have more than five years of experience. And those people, those people who are experienced in cybersecurity, having more than five years of experience, and uh, they are already onboarded to their journey to CISSP. Because in security, every second or third guy, he aspires for getting the CISSP because CISSP is such a boost in his career. Is the biggest certification in cybersecurity. Uh, if you go on the defensive side, I would say. Then aspiring for CISSP, uh, somebody who is aspiring for CISSP but has not started the journey. For him also, for her also, this is going to be a wonderful session. And somebody who just is hungry for learning, trying to understand the entire big picture of security and their your uh, one single operation falls in. If you want to understand the entire machinery, this is going to be the best course for you because the kind of thought process you will have will entirely change. What many people nowadays, they are very, very technically efficient. They are highly efficient, they're working in their area, but they fail to understand the entire big picture, how your security is going to support your business, what are the different roles, what are the different kind of process we have. Security is a vast, vast field, uh, guys, very vast field. And 
uh, people spend their careers into in just one single area of security, not even they are able to switch on to another area of security. So you can see the depth and width of uh, security out there, right? If you want to understand the entire picture, this is the perfect uh, uh, course for you, right? Then there are people who don't have five years of experience. What about those, right? So uh, see, CISSP certification is for those guys who are having more than five years of experience. But it does not mean that anybody who is new to security, anybody who don't have five years of experience, they should not go for CISSP. It's not like that. So even those people who are not having five years of experience, they are eligible to go and prepare for the exam, give the exam, and it will be a real boost for them. Uh, they will not get a certification as of now, but they will be provided with something called as an associate membership. And please believe this associate membership is as good as your CISS, right? It is wholly respected uh, because the, the tag itself, you, you are well advised to put the tag uh, onto your resume, right? So that means a lot. And somebody who wants to understand the full game, the entire game of security, as I uh, already spoken about, this is the best course for you, right? So I feel you guys might be at least into one such buckets. If you are there, welcome. Thanks for joining this session. We are going to hit the deck now, right? Who am I, right? Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Manoj Sharma, and I am basically a military veteran with over 23 years of experience. Out of those 23, I have spent over 15 years purely into cybersecurity from a nation uh, security perspective, and then from the corporate security perspective, I am a, a person who has the military experience as well and the corporate experience as well. So I'm well aware and in defense, you get an opportunity to walk into multiple fields. So I have a very good exposure onto other domains as well, okay? And uh, on the academic side, I have done three master's degrees, as you can see. Uh, I have quite a bit certifications with me, uh, starting with the CISSP, uh, that is what we are aiming for right now. And then I also have CCSP, uh, which is the Certified Cloud Security Professional. Uh, then CSM, Certified Information Security Manager. Uh, C-RISC, uh, Certified Risk and Information Security Controls. Uh, I'm also certified on PCI DSS. So those companies who are going for, uh, who are actually receiving payments uh, from uh, clients and storing some kind of data related to the uh, transactions and uh, the credit cards and all that, right? They, they need to go and get certified from PCI DSS. So I have got that certification as well. I'm also a ISO 27001 certified lead auditor. I have done uh, DCPP, which is a very good certification for privacy because privacy is now a big, big thing in the security parlance, right? And then I have a very good exposure and, uh, and certification on CPETP. That is a privacy certification again, and it's a uh, practitioner kind of certification on GDPR as well. So what is GDPR? It's, it's a uh, regulation, it's a privacy regulation, uh, which actually anybody, uh, any uh, citizen from European Union, he comes under the parlance of PD. So uh, those kind of certification I have gone with. And then I have some good training experience. I have been teaching uh, for last four years. Uh, till now, I was more into uh, uh, two side of things uh, at my job and also into training. I got some dedicated time now to get completely into training. So I have trained over 500 uh, CISSP aspirants. Out of those, at least 70, 80 got certified for CISSP already, okay? I'm an active member. Uh, I, 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 I am a speaker as well. 
So I go and do some conferences and I speak into conferences as well, right? So that's a little bit about myself. If you want to connect with me, you can connect with me over LinkedIn. You can see uh, that link is given. Uh, and then my WhatsApp number also available. So you guys can always ping me uh, for any career guidance. Okay. So that's a little bit about me. Let's come back and talk about security. Right. So security is a big, big area. We already discussed that. Right. Now in security, why uh, the scope for security is increasing? Because it's a lot of threats, a lot of hacking is actually happening around. And some of the news which you might have uh, witnessed during this month as well. Right. So there is a uh, cyber uh, attack which has been uh, identified on FireEye and FireEye you guys know it's a very very big company uh, people trust that a lot and that company coming and disclosing that it had uh, some nation state uh, something kind of hack has happened onto them so that is where a lot of government organization private organization they are uh, believing that company as as like anything and then that company itself is coming and declaring that they are compromised at some point of view. Right? So now you can think nobody is safe. Not even government, not even corporate are safe. Right? Also, you might have heard about Twitter massive hack uh, uh, this year. And that is where the big, big bosses, uh, Obama and um, uh, all those people, right? Their Twitter account was hacked. Man, Twitter got hacked, and that is where a lot of lot of um, uh, the personal information that was kind of utilized by the hackers, and they utilize in a different way to make money out of it. So you can see a lot of a lot of things are going on in security. There is the, the, the landscape is really huge, and the the expertise of the hackers is always increasing. You can see on the bottom of your presentation here, there has been an increase in ransomware. It just started a few years back, and now the ransomware attacks have got so complicated in nature, they are able to do some little movements when they come into your enterprise and all of those things. So these are some of the trends, guys. And then it's just not the uh, cyber attacks which are happening. It is also about regulations. So a lot of regulations are now coming up, things like GDPR. Uh, in India also, we are coming out with data protection directive, things like that, right? So now you see a lot of regulations, they actually impact business. And that is where company need people to do that with them, okay? And you can see on the right-hand side as well, uh, PwC CEO survey uh, top risk 2020. That is where this is the top risk. Over regulations. Regulation is the biggest worry for business. Then there are trade conflicts. Uh, there are people trying to hack each other if they are into the same industry. That kind of scenario also going on. And then uncertain economic growth and cyber threats and policy and whatnot those kind of things. Right? So you can see the trend is really booming out and the, the, the threat is really big. Then who is going to protect and how we are going to protect? Nowadays, you go and search for anything on internet, you will get a lot of tools and technology. And I, I to be very honest, guys, it's not the problem of the tools and technology. It is actually the problem of the people. Right? We have enough technology to actually detect any kind of intrusion and things like that, right? Uh, the real gap is not with technology. It is really with the people. You may have the latest and greatest of technology when it comes to your enterprise. But end of the day, if your security analyst, your security personnel, they are not trained well, they are not skilled enough, the technology is not going to help. All, right. So we see a lot of gap in cybersecurity. And I tell you, as on today, if you have the right skill with you, industry is going to treat you like anything. Right. But 
many people i see uh, uh, almost 80% of people um, i shouldn't say that but yes it is there there is a lack of skill which is always felt uh, in cyber security because cyber security is not that easy it's a challenging field you have to think from a different perspective and also need to know a lot of things right? so that is where there is a big big uh, gap out there now when it comes to gap there is one more gap what happens is right many people as i told in security they may be very expertise into their area but they fail to understand the business requirement for them that is their world they don't come out of that and try to understand the entire big picture of business how the security is really providing value to the business right to the it and those kind of things that is where a lot of miss happens industry is really feeling that there is a lack of a lot of people who really don't understand business well and how the security is there to support the business that is where we can see a lot of gap there okay so uh, we are trying to fill up this gap by means of cissp what is the way out now we understood the threat landscape uh, the kind of attacks which are coming the kind of regulations which are coming the kind of risk which is there and we also understood the uh, the kind of uh, there is a lot more skill gap then what is the way out the way out is only one guys we have to learn learn and learn all the way cyber security is not a field that you come into and then be relaxed if in any company you are getting comfortable is the best time for you to change the company i tell you okay so that is how the the security world is all about right when it comes to security people talk about a lot of certifications so you can say there is a cisp there is csm uh, there is chfi ceh cap and those kind of certifications you can see the cyber security cissp certification it always uh, stands on the top if you have the cissp de designation with you people will going will treat you with a lot of respect the leadership will see you from a different perspective right? because getting cissp is not a easy task you need to understand that any person who is cissp certified means he has understanding of almost all security domain he understand the security the better as you can see on your right hand side we can see a lot of gap when it comes to uh, male and female not many more females are there in cyber security uh, with cissp designation so that is a big area uh, of concern as of now and the average salary after you get cissp certified is huge huge uh, just uh, you can, you can break those bounds for you once you are cissp certified you can target even being a ciso for a company okay so that kind of thing is what is cissp all about now who host this cissp uh, certification so there is the international information system security certification consortium we in short uh, call it as isc2 it's a non profitable organization who is actually hosting this certification and then keeping it in very good shape as well Uh, when i say shape as well it's not like some other certifications out there wherein uh, they are easy to do and uh, there are some bypass technology available uh, wherein people can go and certify it. in cissp you cannot do all that you have to learn you have to learn and then you have to pass it you have to earn it it's not that somebody gave you some terms and then you read it go for the exam and break it and crack it it's not possible until because cissp certification test your uh, perception about security it's just not about uh, learning something mucking up something going through some terms and appearing for the exam not that kind of exam so that is how it is and isc2 square is doing that in a very great way the way they are maintaining cissp it's highly respected and that is why it is all um, it is even uh, uh, 
uh, you can say uh, accredited from the uh, government perspective, DOD perspective as well. Okay. So DSSP also provide few more certifications like SSCP, uh, uh, certified authorization professional, certified uh, secure software license, uh, uh, life cycle professional, CCSP, and those kind of things. DISSP is not the end of everything. After that as well, there are some specific concentrations. You can go into like management, into engineering, into operations and those kind of things. So there are some dedicated concentration even after CISSP. Okay. So as we understood what is ISC Square and what kind of certifications is provided, we are going to focus today only on CISSP here, right? So who can get certified? The big time question, who is going to get CISSP certified? So answer is those people who have more than five years of experience, they can go and uh, give the exam. They can get certified. It's, it's only not limited to them. There are people who are not having five years of experience as well. They can also go for CISSP and they can pass the exam, they can get the CISSP designation, and based on that CISSP, once they are getting into the industry, they can show off their uh, experience. So the moment they are going to complete their five years of experience, a certification will be provided from the ISC square. So that is how in both the cases it, it works. Right, let's come and talk about people who are having more than five years of experience. What is the eligibility? So those people who are having more than five years of experience can go for this certification. Experience means in cybersecurity. It has to be in some domain of cybersecurity. What are those domains? We are going to talk about later. Okay. And then they also have to sign some uh, formal agreement on some code of ethics. That's the way they have to actually behave while they are into the industry. Okay. And if you are not having the full five years of experience, but you have gone through some uh, uh, like degree or something like that, there are some certifications, there are some degrees which they consider as a waiver for one year. They can give you a waiver for one year. Okay. And a um, uh, lot many other things, right, when it comes to CISSP. But once you decide, we will have a separate session and talk more about that as well. Okay. So once you pass your CISSP certification, that's not the end of everything. Once you clear your exam, then you need to go for an endorsement process. And that endorsement process is uh, what is kind of reviewed by the ISC Square Committee. And then they, uh, they give you CISSP uh, designation. For that, you also need a undertaking from somebody who is CISSP certified and in a good standing. Uh, he can go and uh, give an endorsement for you. And that is how it uh, the, the task of the management becomes very easy because it is coming from a already a certified guy. Okay, So that is how it works. Once you are getting certified, you got your certification designation, you need to maintain that. It's not that just take it and go. Uh, you need to maintain that on a constant basis, all right? Like uh, this, uh, you need to pay some fees, uh, $125 uh, per year to ISC Square for maintaining your designation uh, because they, they, in return, they provide a lot of things to you. Uh, uh, maybe be related to learning or whatever, a lot of things you will be eligible for. Right? And then you need to continuously uh, uh, upkeep, uh, upkeep yourself in terms of skills and whatever effort you are you are putting in for upskilling yourself, you you can show it as a uh, continuous professional education. So you need to at least achieve forty CPs per year. If you maintain uh, forty CPs every year, after every three years, your certification will get renewed automatically. So this is one certification which you can maintain throughout your life cycle. Just have to pass it once and then maintain throughout your life. And only thing is, you need to uh, do those CIA, uh, CPEs and also pay them the annual maintenance fees. 
that is how guys it's going to be now i told you person should have five years of experience uh, what is that experience there are total eight domains in cyber security uh, cissp certification security and risk management is one of a big area then asset security security architecture and engineering communication and network security identity and access management security assessment and testing then security operations and software development life cycle right so uh, this is where uh, cyber uh, sdlc security right so that is where there are total eight domains out of that if you are engaged into any of the activities related to these fields you can show that as your experience and then get endorsed from a CISSP certified guy and you can get your certification. Okay, so that is how it is there for people who are already having five years of experience. Now, what about people who don't have five years of experience? All right, so that is where they can go for associate of ISC Square. That is one designation which ISC Square provides. So what in there, you will go and appear in your CISSP exam as other people do. You will pass the exam. Once you pass the exam, you also need to go through an endorsement process. And then you need to mention that I don't have five years of experience or you have one year of experience or two year of experience or you don't have an experience. Whatever it is, you are going to declare that. And based on that, they are going to give you an associate membership for, I, uh, for CISSP. And then you can utilize that onto your resume and go and hit the, hit the industry with a seal of trust, uh, CISSP seal of trust, right? Now, this is the associate membership. How you are going to get the certification, right? So once you get your uh, designation, associate designation, you will get six years to actually prove your five years of experience. Within that time frame, you have to show that you are working with some company, uh, you are working as a security analyst or whatever, then that experience will be taken care, uh, that will be taken as an eligibility for you. And the moment you are having the five years of experience, they are going to send you the CISSP certificate. So it's a win-win situation uh, both ways, anyhow, right? The annual maintenance fees also is very less for uh, associate designation. It's only $50 per year and the CP is only 15 CPs per year. Way more uh, easy for those who are actually uh, going for the associate designation. So that is how it works. Now, let's talk about the biggest, biggest hurdle. You need to pass an exam, guys, to get the CISSP certification. It, it's a three hours of exam and truly telling you guys when I did my CISSP back in 2016, it was a six hours of exam. Now you can understand six hours facing a very difficult exam. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for you to concentrate. Uh, now, considering all those things, they have uh, starting from, I think, uh, uh, 2017, they, they turned it into a computer adaptive test wherein there will be a script which will be running in the background. The questions are very dynamic. They will gauge you with different perspective and then they will do a profiling for you and then you will pass the exam after giving the uh, all the questions, right? So the question range from 100 to 150. Now that's also a little different, right? Why it is not 100? Why it is not 150? Why a variable number there? All right. So what happens is all these questions as and when they come to you, they may be easy or they may be hard questions. Every question has its own weightage. You will not come to know that, but every question has their own weightage. Right. Based on the weightage, only you are going, like for example, there is an easy question which you answered then the next question will be a little difficult. Once that is that is also crossed by you, you answered it correctly, then the next question will be a little bit more difficult. Then they will move on to some other domain and ask you some more questions. Right? So like that, there is an algorithm which is working at the back end. 
and based on your efficiency, uh, many people uh, who have passed from my batch, who has done my training, they go and say, we pass the exam within 100 to 105 questions, within that. And there are one or two instances wherein the person has gone up to 130 questions as well, right? So it really depends how well you are actually answering to those questions. What kind of question comes in? So it can be uh, MCQ, uh, it can be advanced innovative questions as well, uh, like some kind of drag and drop, match the column and things like that, right? Overall, you need to score 700 out of 1000 then only you will be declared as pass and you will be given a congratulations message and then you need to get a printout from the uh, uh, Pearson Center. They will give you a printout and that will be your provisional uh, CISSP passing certification. After you pass this provisionally, you go. You need to go for the endorsement process and get certified. Right on your right, right hand side, what you see is a uh, the way the question goes, the algorithm in the back end goes, right? So in a linear way, when the exam was six hours of exam, it was a linear way. There was no back end algorithm or anything. The next question is not actually dependent on the previous question. That is what is a linear way. Now we have brought in a uh, algorithm wherein that algorithm will sense the kind of answer you are giving in this question. And based on that, they will ask you the next question. So that is how it will be. Right? So as we understood the uh, passing criteria, let's go through these domains and you can see their weightage as well, uh, average weightage. Uh, you can see one thing, uh, they're, they're not very much varied. They're ranging from 10% to 15%. What does that mean? So it means that you cannot escape any of the domains. You have to go and attend all the domains. You need to acquire knowledge for all the domains, right? So I will talk more about them uh, a little bit. So security and risk management is one area where we try to understand what is risk uh, to, what is the IT risk uh, to an enterprise? And then how, if you are asked to set up a security program for a company, how you will set up, what will be your tools and technology which you are going to adopt. Maybe uh, you need to have policies, procedures, guidelines, standards, and all that. How you will define all that, how you will set up the rules and responsibility, what kind of process you will make, uh, detection capability, the protection capability, the response capability, uh, the recover capability, how you're going to do that, everything will be talk about into the uh, security and risk management. We will also talk about the legal things as well, all right? What all different legal um, regulations are there which actually impact security, which, which actually guides the way the security should be. Uh, so all those kind of things we are going to talk about in uh, security and risk management. And then the next uh, domain is a small domain, uh, in fact, asset security. And that is where we will try to understand how the company is taking care of all the asset it has. So your asset can range for something which is tangible, you can touch and feel, but your asset can also be intangible. Maybe your some of your developers, they are developing some kind of code, highly important. You may be working on some design. Uh, it's not something you can touch and feel, but it's in electronic form. But that is again an intellectual property, right? So, end of the day, you need to understand that what is the classification of these assets, what I, what I hold, which one is more important for me, which is much more business critical, and that is where I need to give more attention rather than giving more attention to such information which is widely available, right? Because data is the new oil, you also need to talk about a lot about classification. How do we classify? What, how the entire data cycle works, like the moment when it is uh, generated, the moment it is stored and shared and used and then uh, archived and then finally distributed. So we will talk about the entire game here when it comes to asset management. Because if there is no asset management, no proper asset management, I would say, 
your entire security program will fail. Whatever you do, whatever technical activity you do, everything will fail if your asset management is not right. You cannot implement a good security. So that is how. Then domain three is security architecture and engineering, wherein we will talk about uh, when, when designing something, when designing a system or designing a software, uh, maybe anything, right? How you need to make sure that security is taken care of from the design phase itself, right? You may be designing a uh, maybe an embedded system or maybe a IoT device. Then how you are going to take care of security there? So we will talk from more from the engineering perspective and architecture perspective when it comes to domain three. And domain three also talks about a very important technical subject, which is my personal favorite, that is cryptography. So we'll talk about a dear upon the cryptography. What is this all about? Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the applications of cryptography. It is heavily being used nowadays. Everywhere you will see it, right? Uh, the kind of protocols, uh, cryptographic protocols we use, the kind of uh, digital certificates, digital signatures, all that. We will talk about those things a lot. So that is how your um, your security and architecture and engineering domain will go. Then we have communication and network security. So this domain will give you the entire entire picture, little bit technical in nature, but at the same time it will give you a lot of perspective. You will understand what how you can maintain your network security as a whole, right? And how you need to maintain your communication security, VoIP, and things like that. So this domain is purely onto that front. Then we have domain five, wherein we will talk about identity and access management. Now, identity and access management is the first layer of defense. You need to go and subscribe to something. You need to get yourself signed in. Right? And to make sure that only the right people are and kind of authorized people are able to access some resource, you need to set up some controls there. It's just like a door and a lock with, with that. Only the right people should have the key and enter into it. Otherwise, that's always the prime target for attacker, uh, for, uh, for attacks, right? So that is where we will try to understand identity and access management. Then we will talk more about the security assessment and testing. How the penetration testing is done, how the vulnerability assessment is done, how the audit is done, what are different types of audit? What kind of reviews? What is the difference between a review and audit and an assessment? We'll understand those kind of differences there. And then we will also talk about some synthetic uh, transactions and things like, uh, things like that. Okay, so that is where we will talk about that. Then in security operation, we will go and talk about more from the SOC perspective. How the entire big picture actually works? How what are the different type of security operations are there? It is just not your SOC. There are a lot of other security areas as well when it comes to security operations. And then finally, we will dig into what is software development security, SDLC. What is Agile? What is Scrum? What is Extreme Programming? And what is DevOps? What is Sec, sec DevOps? Uh, what is centralized uh, security architecture? What is distributed applications? What is core bar? What is uh, like a lot of lot of technical subjects, right? And then we will also talk about the database security as well, right? So that is how the entire uh, thing will go, right? Do you feel any area which is left out uh, in security? There is no area in security which is actually not addressed in CISSP. Almost everything is we are covering. From March, the CISSP is again uh, going to be revised. So in later stage, we will have few more additional things which will be coming in, but we will talk about that. Okay, so that is how the entire thing will work for you. This is where you need to go and once you get and crack your CISSP exam, which always is a very big thrill. After that, you need to go and go for an endorsement how that endorsement process happens and all that. Uh, there's no point discussing that now because for now being your focus is to decide if this is the right cup of tea for me. Uh, 
and then if it is the right cup of tea for me, how can I help you there in your preparation? This is the kind of certification, guys, you will get once you crack your CISSP. It's always an honor, big, big honor. People will go and show it on LinkedIn as their professional trust of, uh, uh, seal of trust for them, right? So uh, as far as me, I passed my CISSP certification in 2016. Uh, in 2017, January, I got it. And then after three years, I did not go and reappear for CISSP. Since I was in a very good understanding uh, in terms of annual maintenance fees and CPs, it was automatically, uh, they, they upgraded me uh, to the next one, right? So they extended that for next three years for me, okay? And that's so simple, right? Just put your effort one time and then enjoy it throughout your career, uh, CIS, right? That is how it is. Now, let's talk about the mindset, all right? Uh, what kind of mindset you should have uh, for passing CISSP in the easiest way, all right? So, for that, we need to understand what is the ask, which many people, they fail. Many people, they have a myth in their mind that CISSP is very, very highly technical certification and you will not be able to do it because it is so, so into depth. No, that's not the right thing. CISSP does not go into details, into so much of details. We go into some details, but that is not the one. People used to say it as CISSP is a mile wide because a lot of things we need to cover, but at the same time, we are not giving every corner. We are just going one inch deeper. They're just trying to understand what is the technology and then what is the risk associated, how you can make some decision when such a situation actually arises for you, all right? So those kind of things is what is the focus uh, for CIS, right? It is more of the application of some basic security concept. That is what is the ask. People unnecessarily make it such a difficult situation. I tell you guys, CISSP is at all not a too difficult certification. It is just the perception people make it like that. If you have the right mindset while you are preparing for it, it becomes really super easy for you. Okay, so that is what you need to understand. So it is just not about knowledge, but the perception as well. Perception means it's not that you, you understood those protocols and those heavy, heavy technologies. CISSP is not going to test you too much into your knowledge. They will test you what if a particular situation arrives, what kind of decision you are going to take because the kind of decision you are taking, it has to be influenced by some security concept. So the way you think entirely changes once you get your, you, you actually go through CISSP. Your entire thing, the, the way you think will change. And that is what is the requirement of the CISSP examination. Right? So you just need to think uh, from a manager perspective or from an advisor perspective. Right? You may be, you may not be a manager, but think from that perspective. Right? As in, you are an advisor. If you are into this situation and you are the advisor, what kind of advice we, you will give based on that security concept? So that brings a lot of maturity into you. Security is there to support business. We need to understand otherwise why people will pay us. If we are not, uh, there is a manufacturing company who is manufacturing some product. They are, that is their bread and butter. No, they hired IT, they, they implement IT and they, they implemented security peoples in there. Why? Just to make sure that everything works fine and their business objectives are achieved. That is the end game. Right? So we need to understand security is not everything. Security is just one part. And overall, the, the focus of security should be to support business. It should not be uh, just to create some hindrance. We have to actually set up a right balance between comfort and security. So that is what is we are paid for. Okay. End game of security is to minimize risk. Minimize risk to the business. You need to understand that fact, 
right? And we'll keep on repeating that thing when we talk about different process in security throughout different domains of security, right? And the focus should be on improving the process. Somebody coming and say you, uh, this is what is the problem, how you're going to fix it. So those people who are technically in nature, they will immediately jump into that and they will say, uh, this is because this thing is not right, this configuration is not right, you need to install that patch or something. No, that's not the focus. You don't have to do that if you need to get your CISSP. You have to think, how do I fix a bigger problem? Because security here is not to fix things. There are people, there is CIO department who is going to work on that. They see the security team as an advisor. You need to advise them better. And when you advise them better, you don't go and start fixing it. You think it from a risk perspective and then how we can fix a particular process so that such kind of thing does not happen going forward. That should be your intent uh, when it comes to adhering and uh, like clearing those difficult questions. Very easy, right? And then leadership only understand business language. As in when you speak to somebody uh, from a different project, uh, some project manager who is at a high level or some, uh, some director, they people are business people. They are focused on their business. They are not the security experts. So if you start speaking with them, with a lot of uh, technical uh, uh, jargons and things like that, they are not going to understand. So you have to mold your communication in such a way that you sp start speaking the business language. Instead of telling them that I need a firewall, tell them if we don't have a firewall, this is the kind of amount we are going to lose if our company is kind of compromised. So you talk about more in uh, business terms rather than security terms. So that is a very big, big art. You have to learn that. Start learning from the starting of your career itself. This will fetch you a lot of value in the long run, right? Because there is obviously a big, big gap in people understanding security and people understanding business. Business needs somebody who understands technology also better and who understand business also better, right? So those kind of things should be your focus while you are preparing and then appearing for the CISSP examination. Now, in this question, uh, th these are the kind of questions you may face in the examination. So cybernose.com, which is nothing but my own website, is a software company which provides remote connectivity solution. Due to pandemic situation, company witnessed a huge demand in remote conferencing software like Zoom and things like that, right? Internal development team does not have the bandwidth to accommodate this project. Management uh, decides to outsource this project to a third party vendor. As a security manager, which activity should be performed first for due diligence? Okay. So this is a very basic question. Uh, they, they gave you so much of text, but what is the bottom line of the entire question? They are asking, if your company want to outsource some kind of software development activity to a third party, what is your first action in there? What should be your first action? Are you going to confirm their policy, compliance, governance, and then software development lifecycle? Or you are going to verify and check their CMMI uh, maturity uh, level? Or you are going and doing a risk assessment uh, or you're going to calculate deadlines and assurance of completion. Now, when it looks, every options looks right here, right? Because all things are the set of activities you are actually going to perform while you are going to outsource that particular service. But the question is asking about the first activity. Now, out of these four, you have to check the first one. What should be the first one? You need to understand yourself. If you are going to outsource this particular activity, what is the risk involved? Because this activity may involve some kind of PII, uh, personal identifiable information, which need to be protected, or this may have some um, some uh, uh, intellectual property or something like that, right? When you are outsourcing that to the third party, you are more concerned now. 
there may be a situation wherein you just need to outsource one website and all the information is there for the entire public. Will you be so concerned in there? No. So even before reaching out to some other company, you yourself need to understand what is the risk associated with this activity. So to do that, what is the right option? Risk assessment of the outsource process. You don't even need to go to the person. You don't need to go to the company itself. Just go and do some risk assessment. Now, what is risk assessment? What is that? How does it happen? We'll talk more in detail during the training phase. So these are the kind of perception, guys. Little, little tricks that uh, people say CISSP exam is tricky. They, they pick you. Nothing like that, man. If you understand the concept, you have the right perception. All those tricks, you are going to uh, quickly uh, solve them without any problem. Here is another example. They have given us uh, a, a part of some something and they are asking us if this is a policy or a procedure or a standard or a guideline. Simple, right? So to remotely manage your firewall, you will need to first generate a public and private key. In order to do that, please follow these steps. Open cookie and uh, then gen click on generate. Click on passphrase generate some passphrase, make it more random. So stepwise, they are giving you, and they're giving you a very detailed insight. It may also include some kind of screenshot, right? Such a thing cannot be your policy because your policy is always a very high level document. It talks about on a very high level. It cannot go to a putty level. So your policy cannot be the answer, right? Then, Standard cannot be an answer in this case because standard is about what standard you need to follow. For example, if you need to encrypt your uh, hard drive, what is the standard you are going to follow? Are you going to use DS-256, uh, 128, or 64, or you are going to use AES-128 or AES-256 to encrypt your hard drive? So then we specify something very, very clearly that this is standard which we need to follow. That is called as a standard, right? So this doesn't look like a standard, man. This is not a standard. So obviously standard also is not the right option. It is also not a guideline because you may see it looks like a guideline also, but it's not a guideline because guidelines are not mandatory. They are option. You will just say it is recommended. It is suggested. Those kind of words will be used in guidelines. Whereas uh, in a procedure document, which you always need to have, like if you are part of your SOC, then there will be some run books, which you will prepare. And after every incident, you need to go and check which run book is actually applicable for them and then follow the same run book, follow the same procedure. Run book is nothing but a procedure, right? So that is how you need to clearly identify if this is a uh, policy is a standard or say a different you need to identify that difference. there's a lot of documentation floating around in a company if you don't understand that clearly it will be a problem for you okay so understanding that is very much important right so that that is where the answer is uh, uh, procedure in this particular case so, so guys these are the kind of questions you will get okay also why people say that a question is difficult or not difficult? First and foremost, you need to understand the English. Read the question twice, thrice, for sure, right? If in a question, if there is something uh, which is coming like most, least, not, best, first, last, pay special attention to those words because a single note will change the entire perception of a question, right? And you will, you may end up answering on the wrong side if you did not notice that small keyword. So be, be very focused. Multiple options look like the correct answers. Uh, maybe all the four uh, options looks correct, but then you have to start eliminating uh, the further ones. And then finally you reach out to two and then do some comparison between two options and then coming to 
come out of the right option. I will teach you how, how do we do that. A lot of practice sessions are there into our training. Therein, apart from this syllabus, we are actually focusing on those kind of questions. Okay. And then there's some inter-domain questions which will keep rotating from domain one, domain two, domain three, and then finally land up on domain eight. So just to confuse you, there will be a lot of verbiage out there, a lot of language out there, but you need to identify where does it apply. Okay. So some recommendations, read options before reading questions. Make sure you read questions at least twice. Recommend more, uh, focus more on process rather than fixing an issue. We already discussed that. Understand the sequence of step in process. Uh, every process, for example, this is an incident management process. So there, is, there are some steps, step by step. You cannot bypass those steps. So as in CISSP, you need to understand what are those steps and what is their arrangement also, right? The, those things you need to be clear and then nothing can be enforced without a policy. Please understand. If in a company, when you are going to handle thousands of people, then if you don't have a policy, people will have their own style of working. They will have their own set of behavior, which is not acceptable. So the first answer is everything start with a policy. Okay. What are some common questions people keep on asking me? We, I have documented some of them. People say, how much time is required for preparation? I would say uh, four to six months. If you are already an experienced person, it may take just three months for you. If you are not that experienced, it may take six months for you, but not more than that. It should not be more than that. Otherwise, it will not be a project for you. It'll be, it will become an operation for you. And you will always be uh, trying to achieve CISSP and you will not be able to. Okay. How to prepare? Uh, I have a complete session on this thing. How do we start preparing? What kind of things we need to have? Uh, you need to prepare some mind maps and those kind of things. Uh, th those things, uh, we, we have everything set up for you. Okay. Then which study material to refer, right? There is a lot of study material which is available all around. Don't go and hit every book. Don't go and hit every resource. Otherwise, you will get confused, right? There are different perspectives when it comes to security. Different authors, they think differently when it comes to security. Everybody has its own style of putting up things and they have their own perception. Sometimes, if you're referring multiple books, it is just like you're stepping into two boats will go in a different direction, other will go in a different direction, you will get confused. Only refer one book, right? Uh, dumps does not help in passing the exam. Like if you're expecting that those dumps will be, some questions will be part in, of your examination, that is never going to happen. The only thing is, dumps will help you to cross verify your understanding, right? The, there is a lot of dumps also, you need to be very careful what all dumps you need to prepare for. So when it comes to my classes, we have everything uh, defined. What all things you need to go for. So nothing, no, no need of searching anywhere or uh, putting your heads all around, not required. When to go and register for the exam, I would say once you get certified, it's a little costlier exam, all right? And you need to make sure that you are appropriately ready for you. When you are only ready, then only go and uh, book your exam. People will say, uh, book your exam four months before so that you will have that seriousness. No, man, that does not happen. People land up then extending, then, then postponing their exams, right? Don't do that. It's a costly exam. First, prepare, be comfortable, then go and book the exam and then appear for it. Okay? So that is how it should be. <clears throat> now, what are the challenges while doing CISSP, right? Keeping consistency is difficult because this exam requires you to put effort continuously for next four to five months. Maybe four months or five months, not more than that in any case, right? So how do you maintain that consistency? People keep on changing their priorities and things like that, not going to work. 
you need to be very clear in your IIT. Next four months, I'm going to hit my CISSP certification. You need to prepare for it, be focused in there, devote time, devote time and effort. That is what required. Persistence is required. When it comes to CISSP, it's not a rocket science at all. The only thing required is persistence. Many people are highly intellectual. They have the right skill and everything, but they don't have persistence. Somebody who is even dumb uh, in security, you don't understand security well, and he is not a super intelligent guy, but he has that perception, means he can go and hit the exam. He can pass CISSP. Okay, so that is how, guys, it is. Then another thing is in CISSP, many people keep on saying, uh, there are heavy, heavy books, and you have to read that one book, 1,600 pages, things like that, right? Uh, yes, reading is boring for sure. It's a challenge, but to some extent, you still need to go and do that. You need to make that uh, habit. You need to cultivate that habit. So what I do in my trainings is I, I cover in each and every corner of the book. So once you go through those videos, those uh, uh, trainings, then it becomes super easy for you to understand the book because you don't have to, then the words start speaking uh, themselves to you, right? Once you go through the training first and then go to book, okay? So that's the difference a training can bring in for you, right? Then there are some tricky questions. We have a tricky, a lot of tricky solutions to come out of those tricks. Don't worry, we, we prepare. How do you actually go and uh, prepare for those tricks? Right? How to memorize so much stuff? People keep on saying, man, if I am going to domain three, I'm forgetting about domain one because every domain is such use. We're talking about each and everything in security, right? No worries, no worries, man. That is not the expectation. Expectation from CISSP is not that you memorize everything. Just need to understand what thing belong to what. There is a limited amount of knowledge. You need to keep it as memory. I will tell you how to do that. And moreover, when you go for your actual CISSP examination, you will feel, man, I did so much of digging into this subject. Nothing else from that topic. It may be a very simple question from your uh, basic uh, common sense. If you have a security sense and your common sense, most of the time you're clearing uh, that question. Right? So that is the beauty of the CISSP examination, right? Many people don't understand the, uh, these things and that is where they fail, okay? So that was about it. Now, what is the way out? How do we go about it? First and foremost, if CISSP is your aspiration, you need to achieve that in 2021. Take it easy, first and foremost. If you don't take it easy, you are making things difficult for you. Take it easy, be relaxed. It is not such a difficult exam. People have made it because of business reason, people have made it such a difficult exam, right? It is also not a very advanced certification as well. Like, even though in the industry considered that advanced, but I will say, CISSP is just a starting point for you in learning, right? If you start with such a big framework like CISSP, your learning is going to a different, different level, right? So that is something which you need to understand. People don't understand that correctly. Next thing is training will shape you up. So guys, uh, somebody is asking if uh, I am into IAM, does that cover cloud and all? I would say it covers everything, right? It covers each and every corner. Uh, don't worry, we have a question answer session at the end also. Uh, let's wait for that and I will answer all your queries, okay? Now, coming back to where we were in the discussion, right? So I was talking about training will shape you up well. Because going through those trainings is uh, going through those big, big books is not uh, super easy. Uh, that is always not a uh, 
scream thing uh, which people like. Uh, reading is a really boring thing, right? So what you need to do is you need to go and hit a training because the training will give you, give you a bigger picture, will tell you a lot of things. And then once you understand those things, then going through books is very, very easy. So the training does not only shape you when it comes to the content, it also prepares you on the kind of uh, preparation, the kind of mentality you should have while preparing for the examination. So if you are trying to prepare for yourself, uh, you, can, you can still prepare it. A lot of videos available, a lot of books available on the internet. You can do that. But it may take one, one and a half year for you uh, if you take that route. If you need to get it uh, faster, more focused and quickly, then training is the way. So you must go and take a training understand other people's perception also so that things become super easy for you, right? Then what is next? Have a project plan. This is where people fail. People just start preparing for it. They will go and uh, next two months, they will be just into domain one or domain two, right? They are not able to progress further and finish the entire thing. That is where there is a project plan which is a must. So we'll talk more on that. Uh, what is actually a project plan? Because in my training, we are also having a project plan. Uh, what you need to study when? On day one, how you are going to study, what you are going to study, this is all defined. So that kind of structure we have made. Okay. Then People go and refer, start referring multiple books, this and that, and they are super confused. They are super, super confused, and they never ever reach to CISST designation ever, right? Go and refer only one book. Which book to refer? We have all the guidance. I will provide that guidance. Okay. Now, people, what they do, they read out everything, then they go back to some practice, some questions. That strategy is not going to work. So what you need to do, you need to go with the exam, go, uh, go with the book, as well as go with the practice questions. So it has to be a parallel approach. If you are devoting uh, two hours uh, for uh, uh, content, reading the content, go for one hour for questions as well, All right? So in my training sessions also, we have some sessions which are dedicated for only questions dedicated for only questions we go and take something and then we start discussing on this and that is where we discuss about everything and they, these sessions are the super efficient sessions right so those kind of things you need to understand and then don't get carried away with dumps on internet and so much of thing people come and say super difficult super easy exam this and that Forget about everything. Focus on your target. If you are focused on your target, don't think here and there. Do whatever I say. This is a tried and tested method. I have trained over 500 people. I have trained more than uh, uh, almost like 100 is going to reach. Those people who got certified after taking the training. I have a specific method of teaching. Go with that. Trust me. Don't go here and there and you will achieve your destination easily, okay? So that is how it is to be. Now, coming back on to the CISSP batch 19, which is going to start from this 19th of January. This batch will go on for two months when it comes to content. After two months also, we will have, will have sessions. It's not that the training is over and this is finished. I am going to trace you guys until you are getting certified. Okay, uh, that is how actually my training goes in. Then the schedule. This time I have prepared a very uh, thoughtful schedule for you guys, right? So what will happen every day? Otherwise, these kind of training used to happen on weekdays. And you go and attend some training, you think about it. Then on Monday, you are stuck up with your uh, office-related work. Tuesday, you still remember, but forgot about things. Then you lose that focus somehow, right? So what is the strategy now is 
every day we are going to our i am going to give you small small doses every day so you don't need to break your head every day whatever uh, one hour of sessions we have interaction that much is sufficient focus only on that content for that particular day and there may be some assignment which i will give it to you guys for better understanding then on saturday we will sit together for 3 to 4 hours and we will discuss everything in detail again and then covering some more content and then there will be some sessions which will also focus on questions only on questions bring in questions and we will discuss that so this is the way we are studying also uh, i am not going to give you something as a bigger jump every day small small doses you will get you will be very much targeted okay this is my target for the day so i am breaking the big thing into small small things and then giving it to you for the patient so that is how this training will go guys right this will go for two months after two months also we will have sessions uh, basically sessions which are for question and answers how to tackle the questions so we we have a lot of sessions like that yesterday also i did one of the session like that so that will be happening until you are getting certified and please remember once you join my training it is not that you join this batch if you you are you are not somehow because appearing for the cssp examination uh, the money is waste no once you get enrolled with me throughout your career whenever you are feeling i i i i need to get some training for cissp i am there to help you okay so it's going to be a lifelong relation it's just not one training or something like that okay training mode will be online through zoom right what is the approach approach is we will have some training sessions as i told you small small training sessions every day so just one hour of lecture every day and then think about it think from the book perspective i will give you some target this day you have to go through this content go and practice these questions kind of thing so that will prepare you a lot okay and then you have to do some reading also parallelly and then parallelly you need to go with some question as well okay? so that is strategy i have a fixed plan how do we uh, go about hitting the cissp exam breaking that into small small junks this is how the project plan for my last uh, class right so we are just about uh, finishing domain 8 into our previous class and for them there are some exam preparation sessions which are ongoing so that is how otherwise guys you will never be able to achieve your cssp if you don't have a perfect project plan you need somebody who can trace you who can push you towards reading and who can push you uh, who can question you what is your outcome for the day otherwise this thing is not going to help uh, right so that's that's very much required so as part of the training what you will get okay so this is the only course which is providing end to end support you go and search on internet there are a lot of trainings available all these trainings are ranging from 32 hours to 40 hours and these are basically boot camp they only discuss very high level about something if they uh, they need to cover ip uh, ip uh, thing they will just talk about why ip version 6 is not compatible with ip version 4 and then uh, they will start speaking right it's not the way it happens in my training if my training need to discuss this we'll go and discuss what is ip version 4 what are the classes how it is defined and what is ip version 6 why ip version 6 is not compatible with ip version 4 then if that kind of scenario you come across then how you are going to react to that what kind of technologies are available uh, to make that possible right that is the way we talk about right so this is the only course wherein it is not for boot camp it is for those people who want to start from scratch from zero to hero that is where i am there with you guys right as i told you i gave you an example there is a complete project plan what we follow 
there is 72 hours of training. Please remember, it's a two intensive training. It's not 32 hours, it's not 40 hours. We are going, completing 72 hours. Sometimes it go and hit 90 hours as well in one of the batches, right? So it depends on what depth we are going, what is the audience, as per that, we go and discuss because we are we are caring about, about everything in detail. So that's the difference here. Okay. There are some dedicated exam preparation sessions which we have. There is free study material. We don't need to worry about material. Every material, customized study material is available with me. I am going to make that available to you guys for free. Okay. Then what else? There is free custom prepared notes. Every domain, you are going to get some free notes there, man. What else you want? Then free 2000 practice questions. We will be practicing a lot of questions into our classes as well. And parallelly, you will also get some uh, ebooks wherein you can go and hit. So th that's the perfect combination here. Uh, and best chance for you to clear your CISSP examination. All session recordings, maybe two hours, three hours long, whatever it is, all those session recordings will be available to you. Okay. Then what else? There will be free access to course content for six months uh, for you to go and prepare for you. You want to extend it, welcome. We can extend that for you, not a problem. Then free access to future trainings till you get certified. It's not that you are just part of my, my one batch. If this batch somehow you could not appear for CISSP, come back to me in my next batch. No questions asked. There is no fees asked. In my current batch also, there are four to five people from my previous batches who are joining. Okay. So it is up to you, man. It is your, uh, it is your intention. It is your aspiration. It is your commitment required. From my side, it is already 100% commitment, okay? So all these kind of good, good things, what you see is all available uh, for you guys. Now, what makes it more special is, let's compare the other bootcamp training and my training, okay? Because there are obviously a lot of trainings available on internet, right? So what is the other training? They focus on bootcamp. Right, bootcamp is for people, those people who are experienced, who have already through, gone through every content and next week or next month, they are going to go and hit their CISSP exam, right? It is only for those. This training, which I am providing is end-to-end -end preparation. I will take you from zero, I will make you hero. That's, that's what the training is all about, right? What is the depth? In bootcamp, people talk about that a CISSP professional should need to know this, he should know this, he should know this. That is what you will hear in your bootcamp. I will go and give you deep insight. CISSP professional need to do it, but what is that? Let's talk about that. So we'll go more into insights, okay? And then uh, course duration, as you can see, 32 hours to 48 hours, that is what you get in market. The training which we have minimum, I'm saying this is the minimum, minimum 72 hours. Exam preparation in bootcamp, you don't get anything as an exam preparation. We are having dedicated sessions for exam preparation. We provide free study material. We provide the free dedicated notes and then course fee. Whatever you see on internet, it is costing from 30,000 to 50,000. This training which I provide is just, just 25,000, okay? And for today, since you are here, we are here, I am going to kick start my session, right? There is an early bird offer as well, okay? So if you are going to join me today, right? The offer is just 17,500 rupees. What you need to do is you need to send me WhatsApp message, I will send you the payment link. You need to go ahead and do the payment. If in case you are a new guy, you don't have that much money, uh, you don't have a job because of pandemic and all, you just need to pay me a small amount now 
and then pay later. I will tell you that when to pay. Okay. So everything is available. It is just your commitment guys, which we need. I am here to help. I have helped a lot of guys, almost reaching to 100 people who got certified after my training uh, for CISSP. Uh, I have a lot of uh, testimonials which I can show, but I don't believe in that. All right? Come and join any of my session. Uh, uh, we are open to it. Okay? So that is how the entire training will go. Right? Now, I will open this session if you guys have any questions.